How's it going guys? We're back at it again with another video. My name is Handyman. So the guys are just laying down the rebar for the garage so the forms are built. We're gonna be uh, pouring the slab tomorrow so you'll see another video on, on the update of the off-grid steel garage on Friday. Very exciting. So before I start today's video, I just wanna quickly mention that I'm gonna be speaking at the Home Setting Life Conference August 12th to 13th in Hannibal, Missouri. It is gonna be an awesome event. Um, Off Grid with Doug and Stacy are organizing the entire thing. Uh, there's gonna be a, a, a wide variety of speakers there. If you wanna connect with me, ask questions, that's what I'm gonna be there for. And it's gonna be an awesome event. I'll have a link in the description box and in the comments if you wanna learn more about the events. So a common question that I get regarding our Off Grid solar setup is whether or not I'm going to be installing a small wind turbine uh, to provide some supplemental power to the batteries and to the overall system. So doing wind turbines on the large scale, so the big ass ones that you typically see out in the farm fields that are connected directly to the utilities, um, that's an effective way of doing, of, of generating power from wind. Doing it on a much smaller scale is not necessarily very cost effective. It can actually be much easier and cheaper to just install some extra panels to compensate for any of the power that would have been generated through a wind turbine. So we're gonna go into detail about why micro wind turbines are not really a good idea for a small off-grid setup. Liam wrote a really good article on DIY home set projects going into more detail about what I'm gonna go over. So the first issue that we're gonna look at is gonna be the wind velocity or speed. So Liam pulled up some numbers here on a two kilowatt um, wind turbine for power very often, but when you do, you know, you're gonna be able to generate those 1,000 watts. To compare that to my solar panels, you would just need four solar panels that are sitting there stationary and they're gonna be getting sun every single day. So that's a very easy way to quickly compare a wind turbine to some solar panels. So the issue here is that throughout most of the United States, excluding some places in Wyoming and the Midwest, is that there are not the consistent wind speeds that you're gonna need in order to generate a significant amount of power. So the next issue that you're gonna be running into is the height of the wind turbine. So the higher that you typically build it, the smoother and more consistent the winds are going to be. Now for the Missouri wind and sun uh, generator that we're, that we're using kind of as like a case study here, is that they want you to build that, uh, that wind turbine 65 feet tall. So not like 10 feet tall, not 20 feet tall, 65 feet in the air. So that wind turbine and the tower supporting it is gonna need to be able to withstand some pretty serious winds. And when you're building a tower that tall, obviously it's not something that you could probably easily do it yourself. Um, so there's gonna be extra costs involved in hiring companies to be able to do that for you. The other thing, is building a tower 65 feet tall that has to withstand some pretty, some pretty strong winds. That's not gonna be cheap either. The third thing is, why would you want to install this huge wind turbine, this unsightly wind turbine on your property when you can just easily mount solar panels to your roof or do a ground mount system? So you're also gonna need a high power rectifier and a diversion load. So when your batteries are fully topped up and the wind is blowing, you need something to basically divert the power that is being generated from the wind turbine so that it doesn't go into the batteries because basically what's going to happen is your wind turbine is just going to blow up. So with all these little extras, the price starts, boop, 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 keeps going up. Installing a few extra solar panels at this point probably sounds like a much better idea. I know it does to me. So the third and last issue that you're gonna be running into, I've, I've got a fourth one as well, um, but it's the surface area of the propellers. So if you have more surface area on the propellers, you need a slower wind speed in order to generate the same amount of power. So if you've got a small little wind turbine, you've gotta basically rely that there's gonna be very high wind velocity. So the bigger that you go with the wind turbine, the slower the wind velocity needs to be. So it gets to a point where the capital costs of installing a huge gargantuan uh, wind turbine that is unsightly, well it would be unsightly to me at least, on my property is uh, 
the capital costs involved, it just doesn't really start to, it just doesn't really make any sense. It makes a lot more sense to just invest in more panels or possibly to invest in some more battery storage so that if you are experiencing times where you're not getting a lot of sun and uh, maybe it's like stormy out or during the winter time, then you have more energy collected so that you can go through those periods where you're not gonna be generating a lot of power from your solar panels. On top of that, you're gonna need a separate charge controller, so that adds some cost there. There's ongoing maintenance with a wind turbine, so you've got a motor in there, you've got bearings um, that need to be maintained over time. It just really gets to a point where, I don't like, it's really not worth it for most cases. There are gonna be some circumstances where doing a wind turbine um, would make sense. But for most of you watching this video, it, it really doesn't make any sense. Just add some extra panels, some extra battery storage. Then you're going to be able to get through those times where you're not generating a lot of power. So compare this. Clean, simple, no moving parts, no ongoing maintenance or anything like that regarding these panels. These have a warranty of 25 years as well. 25 years. And it doesn't require anything from me to work. The sun comes up every single day. It's reliable. We know that it's gonna rise every day in the morning, hopefully. We don't know exactly when we're gonna be getting wind. There's certain year, parts of the year I know out here where it's a little bit more windy than usual, but we can't always rely on it. Compare this to a 65 foot tower that's gonna be making noise and that's gonna cost a lot of money, that's gonna require maintenance over time, that could bust over time, because there's a motor in there, there's bearings in there. So there's a reliability issues there. So a lot of you might be familiar with Mike Reynolds. He's the, uh, the guy who really started the Earthship movement. He started building the Earthships back in the day. He used to do wind turbines. He doesn't really do them anymore, except in probably some very specific applications. The reason why is because, yeah, they can generate a lot of power. But the problem is that, that, is that they require ongoing maintenance. But when you're building a homestead for yourself, I mean, there's a lot of things that are happening. So you want to eliminate all the things that are gonna require your attention and maintenance over the years, because it's gonna allow you more freedom and more time freedom to do the things that you wanna do. Awesome guys, if you wanna learn more about how to do off-grid solar using, you can use lithium ion batteries from a Tesla, from a Nissan Leaf, a Chevy Volt. If you wanna learn more about that, check out our off-grid solar basics course. I'll leave a link down below, as well as a link to the article that Liam wrote on these micro wind turbines, why they're not necessarily a good idea. Awesome, thanks so much for watching guys. Catch you on the next video, talk to you soon, peace.